Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts. For as you always resist the proud who divide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the lesson from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family and a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A year old male, you may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the house in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire and with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with his head, legs, and inner organs. You shall not, you shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning shall be burned. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you should eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. 
and all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> the psalm appointed today is 149, responding by, at the asterisk. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing praise in the congregation, congregation of the faithful. faithful. Let Israel rejoice in his maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their great being. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with tremble and heart. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. And adores the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their bed. Let the praises of God be in their throat. And a two edged sword in their hand. To wreak vengeance on the nations. And punishment of the people. To bind their, na their kings in chains. And their nobles in chains. To inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory of all the faithful people. Hallelujah. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. No, wrong, no, wrong one. Apologize. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Oh, no, oh, no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandments, commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore, Love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus said, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth, about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. Well, it's great to have everybody here in the church. That was... Uh, Tough preaching and doing the service just in an empty shell over there. It's just wonderful. It, it uh, I could tell from your greetings that you were so happy to see each other. Um, it has sort of a, a warm, warm feeling of great joy. Did did all of you feel that when you were here today? You know, I see your smiling faces when your masks are down and your strength. But I know that you are in pain and fear from COVID because I am. But I see and I feel around me a great joy in all of you. This is wonderful. A wonderful buzz of joy in the air. And I feel stronger and happier being here with you. And I hope you too feel this wonderful buzz this happiness of being stronger and happier with all of us in your church family. I know you feel it. You said you did. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about today. That wonderful buzz from being in a church family. And maybe all of us can get more of that good feeling every day of our lives. And that's what I read about in today's gospel in the book of Matthew. In chapter 18 that's what we all just read and you have to be aware there's just two chapters back in Matthew 16 Jesus tells his church family his disciples and Mary Magdalene and all the other women that he is going to Jerusalem and Peter says don't go there they'll kill you and Jesus responds Get behind me, Satan. Jesus had to do this. So in Bible context, we're just two chapters later. In today's gospel, Jesus is on his final walk to Jerusalem. A time of great, great distress to his church family, at least. And I believe that they were all listening to him and remembering him especially closely these last words from him on his walk. Their beloved Jesus was a short timer and they were listening closely to his words and remembering them and they are recorded and written down that we read today. I have two different parts of today's gospel that I'd like to share with you, to reflect upon with you. Both of them are these special messages of Jesus to his church, to his family then, and to us here today. This is the first little portion of today's gospel that I'd like to talk about with you, that we just read. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out his fault to him when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you will have regained your special friendship with that person. 
so what Jesus is telling us to do is talk with a sinner. And the sinner, in this case, I think, means anybody who's hurt you. Maybe they, maybe they talk behind your back. Maybe they gossiped. And, and if you can't, if that doesn't work, maybe you bring somebody else and the two of you talk to that sinner, that person who did the hurting. And if you can't do it with the whole church helping out, then you just have to leave it to God to handle. Hurting others is a sin. It's bringing evil into this world. Again, if another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. You know, I read this gospel from Jesus is saying, don't stab somebody in the back and gospel about him or her. Talk to them in quiet, in private, and tell them that they hurt you. Maybe it was just a misunderstanding, but maybe the two of you can compromise and be more careful in the future. We want to build bridges between people and not tear them down. We don't want to tear down bridges between people. And how amazing is that? Here, 2,000 years ago, the words from Jesus still tell us today how to lower hostility and encourage cooperation in our lives today, which will bring us joy and the person we're talking to joy. We can look back upon times when others have sinned against us and other times that they took you aside and caused it to be healed when you and they were both stronger. And this applies not only to sinners, but it also applies to your loved ones. With loved ones, you can take them aside and tell them when there is a difference of opinion so that you can be stronger and more intimate and sharing intimate thoughts and feelings. This will make both of you stronger and happier. Now, today, this Sunday, right now, is a time of biblical trial. And especially we need to heal each other, especially in this time of COVID and this time of political hatreds. This is the time when we need God most and we need to get close to God. We need to be strong and loving. You need to ask that person who's troubled how are you doing today? Do you need me to take a stone from your backpack onto my backpack? Do you want me to take another stone to carry for you? I care for you and we need to care for each other. And especially at this time of trial that we're in, we need to be especially patient with others and be especially forgiving we need to be a healing Christ for them. They may be sick with COVID or worried about it, as we all are. Maybe one of their loved ones is sick with COVID. Maybe they are without rent money or food money or health care money when they don't have a job. This is their time of trial also. Great Christian theologians like Dietrich Bonhoeffer, have taught us that a time of trial like this is a time to get close to God, to know God even better, to become a better Christian at this time and for the rest of your life. We don't need God, especially in the happy, carefree times. We take him for granted those times. In easy times, we drift away into a somewhat superficial relationship with God. And so ironically, this time of trial is in a way a blessing. It is an opportunity to get close to God. You need to recall in your past a time when you were in great pain before. Think of a time perhaps when a loved one died, that you were at peace because you had found God. You need to find your way back to that path 
that day and at other troubled times when you're doing it. You need to find a God's loving hands and heart to your loved ones and to strangers. Be the child of God you were created to be, whom you were meant to be. A few days ago, I received this email at the Republican National Convention, John Ponder of the Hope for Prisoners spoke about his program for rehabilitation and reentry for the incarcerated in the state of Nevada. It was a Kairos program. After taking Kairos, which is Curcio behind prison for prisoners, the program had a 6% recidivism rate. Virtually all were healed by just four days of healing. Just four days of sitting and listening to people of their pains and troubles, being a Christ to them. They were healed, so just had a 6% recidivism rate. He recently was pardoned by President Trump for his excellent work. John Ponder, CEO of Hopeful Prisoners, said he personally had experienced the Kairos weekend many years ago, which was the single greatest thing to help transform his life. And he would not be who he is today if it would not have been for that experience. Kairos, again, is Crusoe behind bars for prisoners. Ronnie and I are involved in the latest Kairos program that was disrupted with COVID coming on, and when it goes away, we're going to try to go back and be that healing Christ for the people. On the other hand, if you have never strongly felt God's peace and love, now is your time. In quiet solitude, pray. Try to feel that joy and love around you. Be still and nurture it. Perhaps be quiet and at peace in your own place of solitude and feel God's loving arms around you. Recall a time in your life when you felt lost and then you became closer to God. With that remembrance of pain and then healing, again, you can then find your path back to closeness in God again. And then after COVID, use the lessons of this time of trial and remember it. Be especially patient with others and be forgiving and be healing and be Christ for them. Maybe they are weak and sick, need special care. Maybe they have a loved one who's sick, maybe one of their children or grandchildren. Maybe they are without rent money or food money or health care money. Use this time of trial, this closeness with others and closeness to God. Be more like the person that God calls us up to be up to our last days here. And in this special closeness, this special magic, the life of others around you also will be more in God's loving light. And you will live a life of more light, more love and more joy, and more of God's peace and love. Be aware in a few minutes, Father John is going to serve us Holy Communion. When we do that, feel even closer to God as we take that communion, as we take the body and blood of Jesus, the Christ, into our bodies. We will be healed and strengthened with the love of God. That is one of the paths to God and joy and peace. My deacon job, and your job also, the job of all of us is to proclaim out loud and often, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Go in God's peace to love and serve the Lord. Go out and heal the world. And by so doing, you will heal yourself and make your life a life of joy, a life of God's joy and peace. The second small and powerful part of today's Gospel of Matthew that I'd like to read with you in closing in our reflection today. It is, quote, Where two or three are gathered today in my name, I will be there among them. Jesus is here with us today, filling our hearts with jobs as we heal each other in love and caring. Today, right now, right here. That is part of the source of the great joy all around us right now, because God is here today in worship, here at St. Timothy's in our own pavilion. 
There's a buzz of joy in the air. It is God calling to us, close to us, inspiring us. I felt that special joy and peace as we gathered this week and last week, and as we worship together right now, right here. You might close your eyes and open your heart and feel God's arms around you now in this time of trial. Let God touch you and strengthen you in the Eucharist and in this worship together. We commit yourself to walk the holy path by God, by yourself, and with all of us, your Christian family. Be strong. God's peace be to you. Open your heart. Have faith. Feel the wonderful buzz and joy of God's presence. He is here with us, especially now in our time of trial. Amen. Bless all of us and our loved ones. Alleluia, alleluia. stand and say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, by one being with the Father, through whom all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he is sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he has worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God's word tells us that those who love their neighbors have fulfilled the law. Out of love and compassion for a broken world, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For nations crippled by international debt, for nations who must beg and scramble for the necessities of life, for nations whose people live in poverty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Have mercy. For all Christians who have more than they need, that taking the Lord's word to heart, they may be content with what is necessary and generously share their surplus with the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering the children of our own country, caught in the cycle of poverty, ignorance, disease, and despair, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in our own cities and neighborhoods who are out of work and out of luck, for broken families, for those crippled by debt, for those at their wits' end, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in any sort of need, 
especially the campfire survivors and their families, Charlie, Bob, Bob Phil, Phil, Donna, Donna Kathleen, Kathleen, Kay, and Maria, Shirley, Ann, Parker, Parker Jane, Jane, Elisa, Helen, Dick and Pat, Marianne, Eli, Eli, Cindy, Robert, and Bill, as well as those for whom we now pray silently or aloud. And for the Christians in Palestine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, you invited the beggars and the crippled, the lame and the blind, to eat and drink at your table and to feast in your kingdom. And lo, here we are. Grant us the grace to extend to others the same generosity you have shown to us. For you are our Lord, our God, forever and ever. Amen. Confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess our sins against you in thought, prayer, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left unread. We have not loved you in our hearts, we have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Ascribe the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with praise. <laughs> Things come of thee, O Lord, and I lay down, have we given thee.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who in the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. Thanks to you, o God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error to truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presented to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Timothy, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of our Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of the eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Go forth in the world of peace, be of good courage, hold fast that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, Help the afflicted, honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain upon you forever and ever to the ages to come. Amen. Amen. Amen.
love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.